Welcome to the School of Wordcraft and Wordmancy. This is Feedback Frenzy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Submit Saturday Fiction Critique here at Writer Greg's School of Worldcraft and Wordmancy. We're going to go ahead and start into another article here that was submitted at wgc.bz slash submit. And thank you so much to Barbarossa Sparklebeard, who submitted this article, uh, The Storm Locomotive. So we know what we did or didn't submit. Also, what are the chances of getting picked? Oh, oh, okay, if you want... So, I roll a dice, a 12-sided dice, at the... Big, before I start, and so it's a random... The 12 most recent submissions will be randomly selected from, and as... Uh, yeah, a, D, a D12 plus one to give me the row number of the spreadsheet from the Google Doc. So that way, anyone, um, I will be able to, it's still kind of random, but it still allows people who submitted early to get their stuff. Because using a D20, uh, it reduces the chances of the first article being picked. Do I need to and time will tell if I need to reduce the D12 to a D10 or a D6. No. So I, sh so I should resubmit my older ones? No. If you have submitted it, it is in my Google spreadsheet. You don't need to resubmit. The older ones are nearer to the top. So... Your older ones are, okay, let me just look at it. Um, for example, the first, the top 12 are, we have Kidopoi, one by Kidopoi, two by Eli Quake, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, by Dazzling, Dazzling Cat, another one by Kidopoi, and then one by James Woodwright. So, Kit, you have a 2 and 12 shot that yours will be next. James has a 1 and 12. Eli Quake has a 2 and 12. Dazzling Cat has a huge one. But I will keep rolling. If, if it's a, a person gets two in a row, I will not do daz, two Dazzling Cats in a row. It is the luck of the dice. So, that after this critique, I'll roll and... Since Barbarossa Sparklebeard isn't here in this one, it'll definitely, but I'm not, I don't do two Dazzling Cats in a row. And I'm just going to leave this as a part of the clip that's going to be at the beginning of Barbarossa Sparklebeards because, you know what, I don't want to change Lemons. It. I thought that was a great Let's introduction. Roll. I forgot which I've put in. Uh, okay, you have two. Uh, we can talk about that later. Okay. You can just go down the list past me. Correct. I will keep re-rolling until I get a non-Dazzling Cat one. <laughs> in the D... In the... Uh, so, like if... Yeah. We'll talk more about the after this fiction critique because we're spending time on it. Okay, the Dor the Dorian Tribune Evening Edition has Storm Locomotive. So let's take a zoom out, take a look at this article. All right, pretty straightforward. This is an entry for World Build World Building Summer Camp 2022. A vehicle or type of vehicle used for long journeys. All right, we have a beautiful picture there. We have three sidebars. Looks like not sure what the sidebars are, but it's a nice and equal length. We have a we have an intro, and then we go into what look like standardized the standard boxes for the template. So okay, good for it. You know, and for world, unless you're trying to go super crazy, I think the standard boxes for each of the prompts are really good. 
They will format it for you. It'll do the headers for you on World Anvil. I think they're great. Uh, it's when you start getting into the craziness of CSS that you need to just use the regular, uh, the vignette at the top of the page. All right, so let's take a look at the sidebar. Nicknames, manufacturer speed. Okay, and these don't look like they are fiction or anything. They just look like they're sidebars. Okay. One engineer, one regulator. All right, so let's get into 200% zoom. Dog Grunham Spy and Doria homepage. Interesting, this world is called Dog Grunham Orc Detective. Oh, I got to take a look at that. Oh, 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 that sounds so cool. Sp sp orc spy, orc detective. Okay, sorry. Enough distraction. The storm locomotive is a form of high speed transportation utilized for both passengers and goods across the continent. The engine is powered by the captured essence of storm elementals which charges the engine to push the drive wheels along rail tracks. Again, really good uh, introduction header as far it tells me exactly what this article is. Now, is it a hook? I think it does good as a hook because of the second sentence. Captured essence of storm elementals. This tells me why it's called a storm locomotive instead of a steam locomotive. Steam is real world. Storm is fantastical. And so I think the do it does well to provide this here. Now, if I were to do a little trick, I would tool tip storm elementals. Now, why do I call that a trick? Because it will underline it. And if you hover over it, it'll give you a definition to storm elementals and a possible link to another article. And people's eyes have been trained to look for underlines on the web page. So if the storm elementals, if you really want that to pop out, breaking the rules, uh, kind of trick, bending the rules. No, not, it's not bending grammar rules. It's grammatically fine. But if you want a visual trick to draw someone's eyes to the most important part of a sentence or a hook paragraph, use a tooltip. And that way, you, I said storm locomotive, storm elementals. Ooh, oh, I got to go back and read that and see what it is. Because when people see elementals, certain people will get excited. And so that will hook people into reading the entire article more effectively. Appearance. The standard for many passenger locomotives is to be shaped in such a way to provide reduced air resistance. They possess curved, smooth surfaces with almost hidden cabs for crew, along with sunken lights with rounded glass covers. Because they are powered by electricity captured from storm essence, locomotives do not possess any means to release steam through funnels or exterior drive pistons which helps help reduce lower air resistance. These locomotives can reach a maximum speed of 100 to 125 miles per hour or your kilometers. Good thing to do here. This, this is really nice for accessibility and a global reach. Putting in the, the metric or putting in the uh, empirical, whatever you call it for us, Americans who refuse to change to metric. I mean, seriously, when I think of elementals, I think of those from World of Warcraft. Yeah, but see, it, it, it caught your attention, didn't it? You're going, wow, World of Warcraft, wow, storm elementals. In a train? I got to read this. See, that, see, that's what's the cool thing about it. Okay, uh... I won't go on a tangent how I think the United States should have switched to metric during the pandemic because everyone is shut home anyway. Okay, mixed and good locomotives. Mixed and goods 
locomotives do not possess the same streamlined appearance, instead having a boxier, squarer appearance. I don't know if you need both words there. Yeah, doesn't hurt, but having both words. With larger drive wheels and expo exposed bogies. Okay, that needs a tool tip. I have the only... A bogey to me is Harry Potter's terminology for what comes outside of your out of your nose when you pick it. So troll bogies. I need to know what an exposed bogey is on a train because I don't know, and I'm thinking of troll boogers. Their buffers are square and possess large exposed light systems that to help drive at night. Their cabs are also not as hidden as by the main battery of the engine, allowing a far better view for the engine's crew. These locomotives cannot reach the same speed as their streamlined counterparts struggling to reach and maintain 70 to 100 mph. These engines can come in many sizes, shapes and sizes depending on the country. As well, these engines can sport different colors and liveries. Need a tooltip? I would recommend a tooltip, both based on the rail company and purpose. Goods trains tend to use darker, dirtier colors like reds, browns, and blacks, while passengers tend to be brighter colors like blues, whites, and golds. Okay, uh, let's just take a pause here for a second. I think that, okay, the appearance here is the header one level. Okay, uh, and then we only have purposes underneath here. I think it, this section here would do well to have more section headers or subheaders, H2s, where you, you saw, talk about here's the description of the standard, here's the description of the goods, I mean, passenger, goods, and then emphasis on aerodynamics. You could say aerodynamics is the header and then put the contrasting differences between the passenger and the goods in the same article in that paragraph so that you can say okay um, appearance goods oh okay it will help scannability and help you to be able to read and find the information more quickly and those who want to be able to read it in detail, won't be harmed by adding extra headers, but those who are scanners uh, will be able to find the information they want much more quickly. So I would recommend here. And an old rule, an old rule that I learned in elementary school when they were teaching us how to use outlines is if, if you, to put something underneath an item, <clears throat> requires at least two items because if you have a header and then in, under the outline you only have one thing that's a redefinition of the previous thing for sprinters you sprinters break marchers continue for you to have subheaders you need to have at least two and so that rule always comes back to me when i look at the different headers of here what's the diff what's the diff the purpose of purposes I don't know, but if you had appearances and you then describe the two appearances, then you talk about being the streamlined air resistance and it's a pact on, purposes, on appearances, and then you get into purposes, that would be great because then you're following that outlining rule of one topic, multiple topics. So if... So again, old school rule, if you're creating an outline and you can't uh, have two unique headers underneath it, it's just a redefinition of the previous, and so you really don't need it. But, again, old school. There's no school like the old school. The main distinctions is whether or not the locomotive has a tender. Engines without tenders, often called battery engines, are utilized on short local surfaces or shunting freight wagons or passenger coaches. 
Battery engines possess the advantage of being able to pull goods and passenger services with relative ease. Often these smaller locomotives are used in larger stations to prepare wagons or coaches and bring them to locomotives for their respective service. These engines are called station pilots. Okay, so I would change this header to station pilots because now we have three types of trains. We have passenger trains, we have goods and cargo trains, and now we have station pilots, a third type of train that has its own unique appearance. As defined by the lack uh, that it, if it has ten, a tender or not. And again, a tender would it'd be nice to have a tooltip on that. Tender engines possess the adv advantage of larger size and the battery tender, which allows for longer journeys. They also possess a stronger system, which gives them more power to pull larger and heavier trains. Because of this, these locomotives are used for services spanning one or several countries. Okay, not counties, countries. These trains also go further than their smaller counterparts without recharging, while also reaching a much higher speed. Okay, got a question here for you, Barbarossa. Um, recharging? I thought these were storm elementals. You need to recharge a storm elemental? I'm confused. Uh, yeah, I confused. Propulsion. Utilizing interior equipment, the locomotive use the captured storm elemental essence and convert the electrical energy into mechanical energy. This then powers the motor that drives the axles, allowing the train to move. The engineer then utilizes the throttle to control the speed of the locomotive and keep watch from their position on the footplate. A secondary person, called a regulator, keeps track of the voltage and volatility of the essence. In case of emergency overcharge or surges, the regulator can attempt to cool the battery with coolant or discharge the electricity into the tracks using a grounding system through the wheels. This is dangerous, however, as it can leave the train unpowered and stranded. On larger tender locomotives, storm essence is stored and the tender acts as a form of as a form of portable charging station and is utilized while the train is in motion. However, on smaller locomotives and battery locomotives, power is gained by using the locomotive's interior light lighting lightning rods, which emerge from the side and capture essence from arc towers. Oh good. A series of arcs arches that are placed over active rail lines that are electrically charged by storm elemental essence. Okay, cool. So I do have a little bit. So let's go to the ABC. What is awesome? Only 10 minutes left, everyone. That's not awesome. Let's squeeze out the words. That's awesome. No, okay, so uh, what... Oh, I haven't read the sides. Liveries are, are important to many who work in the railways of the continent as distinctual as it distinctualizes each company liveries are the color schemes designs and even coats of arms present on each locomotive and often come in three sets passenger colors freight and goods colors and mixed colors however many companies only utilize two giving a goods livery to their mixed traffic engines on smaller railways Nothing is more important to an engine than its crew. Because of this, all crews are often dressed in the uniform of their respective employer, whether it be a state-run or private enterprise. For the most part, this is simply some variant of a dress shirt, tie, and jumpsuit with a company logo. Crews play a vital role in their engine process, but long journeys can be taxing on them. It is required that crews not work over their shifts and as such must swap with new crews at stations if they begin to exceed this time. While the length of time varies from country to country, the time allotted is roughly 12 continuous hours. Okay, good extra information. 
I like that it's on the side here, especially this part that's talking about the crew, because it's not talking really about the engine, it's talking about the people on the engine. However, I think that this paragraph here would be a great paragraph to promote to the main article underneath appearances with its own header. So we could have a header for the three types of engines, and then we could have a header on liveries, which I don't know if I'm pronoun pronouncing it correctly, or and then we can just have a lot more subheaders within that thing. I think this leaving it here does draw closer, uh, more attention to it, but this might be important enough <sighs> to put into the main article. Okay, so let's go through and review this a little more. What is awesome? Okay, what is awesome? This has a great hook. The, using the word storm elementals in the first paragraph tells us that this is a different situation. This may seem similar, but because we're using the word elementals, it's, it's new. It's, it's cool. Bored. Uh, honestly, I was a little bit bored in the propulsion section, ta talking how an engineer and a uh, utilizes the throttle, the talking about the regulator, not so diff, not so boring. All right, not so boring because it's something new, it's something different, it's a, a something a little bit dangerous, but th the. We know we, if there were, if there was something that could help us know more about the engineer and their jobs and you know a lot more tool tips on what's a foot plate, what is um, you know stuff like that a diagram of a train a silhouette, a, a cutaway or something showing the different components of a train engine would be really cool. Okay, A, B, C, confused. I am confused about the energy elemental. I am really intrigued by it, but I'm confused. Is it a battery or is it an un uninterruptible power supply? If it's a storm elemental, why does it have to recharge? What's the limitation of storm elementals? And if there are these arc towers that are also controlled by elementals, do they have to be recharged? Um, do you need to explain why these are being, or why they need to be recharged here or in a different article? It depends. Do you want to have a different article? Do you have a different article on storm elementals? My recommendation is you do so that you can have the tooltip link here in your hook paragraph. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not breathing enough. Um, so I, I would just, I would like to know more about the storm elementals and how they are different than just plain old batteries. Like, you could have an electrical train, you pull into the station, you offload batteries that are discharged, you load in new batteries that are charged, and you're on your way. Well, what's the... I thought the benefit of having a storm elemental or the magic is that it stays there and it just powers it. So I don't know. So that's what I'm a little bit confused about. If I were to add something, uh, I don't think I have anything that I would add except for the clarification of the appearances section where you split it up into smaller different things. If you want to add something to it, you could talk about the first steam locomotive uh, that went into regular service. Where did it go? Uh, if this is the uh, a pseudo United States, did it start in New York, Chicago, St. Louis? Did it or Georgia? Did uh, 
um, who invented or who harnessed the first storm elemental. That would be great to know. But that would probably belong on a storm elemental page. So, yeah. I think this is, this, this is really good stuff. But it... Um, uh, pretty straightforward. I guess I get. I guess I got bored with the human, realistic stuff, and I was more excited. I was more excited about the uh, storm elementals. But yeah, well done, well done. So if you would like to have your article critiqued in this manner, please visit wgc.bz/submit for an where you can submit your fiction, your World Anvil articles for review, and then they will be included in the next, in an upcoming Submit Saturday. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a good one, and see you next time. Thanks for watching this Feedback Frenzy. Be sure to show your support by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Writer Greg offers coaching sessions to help bring your world to life, create compelling stories, and accomplish your creative goals. Please visit wgc.bz coaching for more details.